the previous lecture, uh, we discussed about the extension of the response spectrum method of analysis to multi support excitation, then for cascaded analysis and uh, for the non classically damped systems. After that, we uh, discussed about a very useful seismic uh, analysis method which is uh, widely used in almost all countries for designing the structures for earthquake forces and it is also given in the seismic course of all countries. The seismic coefficient method as such has uh, certain limitations in the sense that it does not take into account the all participation of all modes of the structure into the response. Uh, secondly, uh, it is based on uh, to some extent uh, the empirical formulas uh, which are difficult uh, to support completely theoretically. However, the basis of those uh, formulas uh, can be uh, justified to some extent. In spite of that, the seismic coefficient method has been found to be very popular with the engineers. They try to analyze most of the structures for the uh, in spite of that the seismic coefficient uh, method of analysis has become very popular with the earthquake engineers and for most of the structures especially for building structures they use seismic coefficient method for finding out the forces for which they would design the structures for earthquake. Almost uh, all countries have their own seismic codes and in that code there are several recommendations for the seismic analysis and design of structures. The codes uh, specifically uh, give recommendations for three kinds of analysis that is the response spectrum analysis, a response time history analysis that is RHA and the seismic coefficient method. The codes also specify under which circumstances one should go for response spectrum method of analysis and the cases where one can go ahead with seismic coefficient method. Apart from that, the recommendations are there for which the response time history analysis for a given time history record or a specified time history record has to be analyzed for structures which are designed with the help of seismic coefficient method or response spectrum method of analysis. These cases typically include uh, the cases where uh, we wish to uh, study the behavior of the structure in the inelastic range and as you will uh, see later that uh, most of the designs that are accomplished for structures for earthquake. For that uh, we deliberately allow the structures to get into the inelastic range for design earthquake level. Uh, therefore, uh, many a time the behavior of the structures in the inelastic range becomes uh, very important. For those situations, the response time history analysis is an important consideration. The time history for which the structures uh, are to be analyzed uh, depends. The time history of the ground motion could be a size specific time history of ground motion. It could be a time history of uh, ground motion which uh, has considered uh, which has uh, developed maximum amount of damage in the past uh, in that particular region or one can construct a time history of ground motion for 
uh, a given response spectrum or a given power spectral density function of response. The all of them we have uh, studied uh, when we are discussing the inputs for ground motion. We have seen that how one can construct a response spectrum compatible uh, time history of ground motion or a power spectral density function compatible time history of ground motions. Thus, uh, in the seismic codes, uh, we have all the three kinds of analysis and depending upon the structures and uh, the need, uh, we use uh, either one of them or all three of them. The uh, structures which are to be designed uh, are to be uh, safe against earthquake that remains the final goal. Course specify the following important factors uh, for seismic analysis. The first one is the approximate calculation of time period for seismic coefficient method. Then it provides a seismic coefficient versus the time period plot. The third one that it specifies is the effect of soil condition on A by G or the spectral acceleration uh, normalized with respect to G and uh, the uh, seismic coefficient. The approximate calculation of time period is generally associated with uh, the use of seismic coefficient method. The reason is that in the case of seismic coefficient method, uh, the entire method is thought to be an equivalent static analysis unlike the response spectrum analysis where it is partly dynamic and partly static. The dynamic part consists of finding the time period or the frequencies of the structure and the mode traps. Once those are calculated, uh, then rest of the things turn out to be a static analysis. In the case of the seismic coefficient method, the entire thing is conceived as a static analysis and therefore, uh, the time period of the structure is obtained with the help of a empirical equation rather than finding them out from a dynamic analysis. The CH versus T plot shows that the seismic coefficient depends on the time period of the structure and this time period is calculated using this approximate method. The effect of soil condition is extremely important in seismic design that uh, we have discussed when again we were discussing about the effect of the soil condition on the seismic waves. That is as the seismic waves uh, pass from the rock bed to the surface passing through the soil, then the properties of the soil modify the ground motions that are caused at the surface of the ground. Therefore, the spectral acceleration that we use for designing the structure uh, should take into account the local soil effect. Uh, generally, uh, we divide the soil effect uh, into three conditions. Number one is the hard soil, then we categorize uh, the uh, as a medium soil, then we consider a soft soil. So, for these three categories of the soil, the spectral acceleration uh, or the CH value uh, which is obtained for different time periods, they do vary. Therefore, we have different curves uh, for the different soil conditions. The next important thing uh, that is uh, specified by the code is the seismicity of the region by specifying peak ground accelerations. This is uh, done by uh, dividing the entire country 
into different zones and each zone we specify a an expected value of peak ground acceleration and the structures are designed for that peak ground acceleration while designing the structures in that specific region. The reduction factor is a, a very important criterion that is included in the seismic uh, design of uh, structures to include ductility in the design. The basis for this is that we want the structures to go into the inelastic range at the design earthquake level. When it goes to uh, the inelastic range, uh, then we permit a certain amount of inelasticity into the design. That is after it has yielded, we allow some kind of displacement to take place in the inelastic range. The amount of displacement or excursion that the structures uh, do take after the yielding uh, that is governed by what is known as the ductility factor. Now, this ductility factor is again or in turn is uh, dependent on the reduction factor that is utilized for the design. Finally, we have the importance factor included into the seismic designs of uh, structures. The importance uh, factor provides relative importance to different type of structures. For example, in a nuclear power plant design must be more safe than a residential building or any other structures. Uh, therefore, the factor of safety that is taken into account for uh, designing a nuclear power plant is more than other structures. So, that is achieved by providing an importance factor to the uh, seismic design coefficient or the response spectrum ordinates by multiplying the uh, fact uh, multiplying them with the help of some importance factor. So, these are the salient features of the court provisions in almost all courts of the uh, world and we uh, uh, look into all these things when we study the code. Here we are not going to discuss all issues, we will be discussing only about the only about the uh, first three that is the approximate calculation of time period for seismic coefficient method. Uh, then we look into CH versus time period plot and the effect of soil condition on A by G or S A by G and uh, CH with T. So, our uh, discussion uh, here would be mainly centered around uh, these uh, three things which are given in the code. The other things uh, that is uh, the seismicity, the reduction factor and the importance factor they are, are dependent uh, on the um, specific country and the factor of safety uh, that is considered uh, in different uh, parts of the world uh, in designing the structures. The reduction factor has of course, uh, some kind of commonality uh, in the sense that uh, how much we allow the structures to go into the inelastic range for that we have some kind of common what to call decision uh, in uh, all the codes. Uh, therefore, a reduction factor which is given in a code does not vary much if we compare it with other codes. Similarly, the importance factor also uh, do not uh, vary much from one code to the other. The seismicity of the region is something 
which is a, a country specific, uh, each country depending upon its uh, seismicity that means uh, the severity of the earthquake that has taken place in the past based on that each country um, has their uh, own seismic zonation map and from that uh, zonation map they decide about the peak ground acceleration uh, that is to be used. So, here uh, we will be mainly discussing uh, about the first three uh, factors uh, for uh, the these codes that is IBC 2000 that is International Building Code, NBCC that is the National Building uh, Code of Canada, then Euro Code, then New Zealand Code and finally, the IS Code. The main idea over here is to show that uh, what kind of differences that are there in the three uh, factors that I have said uh, before and what are the kind of commonness that uh, each one of these codes have with respect to those three factors. First, uh, let us take the International Building Code. The seismic coefficient CH for class B site is given by equation 5.46. The class B site specifies certain zone in which a peak ground acceleration is specified and for that the CH values uh, are uh, shown by this equation. For other classes for example, class A or class C uh, these values uh, may differ. One can see that the value of CH it remains same up to a time period of 0.4 second that is from 0 to time period of 0.4 second it remains unity CH value as unity. Then after the time period of 0.4 second the CH value falls down non-linearly or inversely proportional to the time period. For the same site that is for the class B site the SA by G or the spectral acceleration normalized with respect to the uh, G value is given by the formula uh, A by G is equal to the 0 0.4 plus 7.5 T n that is the T n is the natural period then uh, S A by G is equal to 1 and S A by G is equal to 0 0.4 by T n that is uh, for T n greater than 0 0.4 second. Uh, it again uh, in is it is again inversely proportional to the time period. For the segment of time period 0 0.08 2.4 seconds it remains uh, equal to 1 whereas for very small time period that is uh, up to 0 0.08 second uh, it is uh, 0 0.4 plus something. Now, if you compare this uh, SA by G value with CH value, we can see that they are more or less the same that is the last two of SA by G uh, that is 1 and 0.4 by T n that is uh, same as the value of CH uh, within the time period uh, range that is specified. Therefore, it is expected that the CH uh, value and the SA by G, G value for different time periods or the plots of them uh, against T will be nearly the same that we will see uh, later. Next uh, the time period may be computed by an equation 5.48 and this is uh, given for the seismic coefficient method 
if we are using the seismic coefficient method for finding out the uh, seismic forces induced uh, in uh, different members of the structures obtained by seismic coefficient method of analysis, then the time period uh, that is calculated is by this formula. So, this formula is uh, known also as a Rayleigh's formula. Uh, here W i indicates the floor weights, F i is an arbitrary load which is distributed along the height, but this distribution uh, should have a reasonable distribution. Uh, preferably uh, this distribution is taken as the distribution of the first mode of the structure or similar such kind of distribution. So, the load the arbitrary load F i distributed in that particular fashion when it is applied to the structure it produces a displacement of u i at each floor that is uh, the meaning of u i in this equation 5.48 and with the help of this equation one can find out the time period for the structure and use the seismic coefficient method. Next comes the distribution of the lateral force uh, over the height. This we have discussed uh, at length when you are discussing the seismic coefficient method and we have shown that the base shear that we obtain that can be distributed. Uh, using a formula which is uh, given by five, equation 5.49. The k value or uh, that is the power uh, which is uh, the or the height raised to the power k, the that k value varies and some codes straight away provides uh, the k value that is one k value uh, for all cases in some codes we have uh, different k values for different time period region. For example, in this particular case that is uniform uh, the, the international building code, uh, the three values of k are recommended that is 1, then next is 0 0.5 uh, into T 1 plus 1.5 and the next one is 2. Uh, they are valid, the first one is valid for time period less than 0.5 second that is k is taken as unity for time period less than 0.5 second. For time periods between 0.5 second to 2.5 second the value is taken as 0 0.5 into T 1 plus 1.5 and when T 1 is greater than 2.5 second uh, then the value of k is taken as 2. Uh, in the last case one can see that uh, the power is uh, raised to 2 that is the variation is a quadratic variation along the height. Distribution of the lateral force for a 9 story frame using uh, the distribution that was uh, shown by uh, the equation 5.49 uh, that was shown uh, that was computed and is shown in figure 5.8. 5, 5 Mind you that uh, the base shear that was calculated uh, was obtained by multiplying the total weight of the structure by the seismic coefficient C H uh, 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 obtained for uh, the structures period calculated by the Rayleigh's uh, approximate uh, method. The figure shows uh, that the variation of the story forces that is uh, the forces which is distributed uh, along the height of the building uh, that uh, varies uh, uh, non-linearly uh, for time period is equal to 1 second, for time period is equal to 0 0.4 second and 2 second uh, these uh, variations are mildly nonlinear. The uh, there is a kink at the 8th floor level. This kink uh, 
has come because of the sudden change in the weight at the top flow level. One can see that at the top flow level the uh, force or the weight of the structure is reduced to half. That is why uh, this kind of kink uh, is uh, seen in the distribution. Next comes the National Building Code of Canada 1995. Here uh, the seismic coefficient C H value is uh, given by C E into U divided by R, where R is the reduction factor. In the previous case, uh, we have not uh, talked about the reduction factor. Uh, here also although R is there uh, that means uh, the seismic forces which are calculated uh, by the formula is reduced by a reduction factor that the same thing is done in the case of uh, IBC, but we have not uh, shown that. Here uh, in the formula it is straight away given however, we will not discuss about the factor R. We will discuss about uh, the C factor C, uh, U is a scaling factor, the C E is given as it is uh, not U, it will be small v, v s i f where i and f uh, they are the uh, importance factor for the structure and uh, for V is equal to 0 0.4, it is not U is equal to 0 0.4, it should be V is equal to 0 0.4 and for I is equal to F is equal to 1, the variation of S and A by G with T are uh, shown uh, in this uh, particular uh, figure. Uh, the figure shows uh, that the uh, first figure that is figure 5.9 shows the seismic response factor S versus time period T and the next figure in the next figure we will show the variation of A by G with T. We can see that the seismic response factor has a, a branching in the initial uh, stage. Uh, there are three branches, first branch is the acceleration prone region that is uh, Z A greater than Z V. The middle one is the acceleration proneness and the velocity proneness both of them are same that is Z A is equal to Z V and the third line corresponds to Z A less than Z V. So, in the up to a point of 0.5 time period, uh, this uh, branching uh, specifies uh, the kind of zoning uh, that is considered. If the zone is a acceleration prone zone, then we take the top curve. If it is uh, both acceleration and the velocity both of them are nearly the uh, have the same importance uh, then we take the middle curve and the last curve is taken where the acceleration is relatively less important compared to the velocity. And after 0.5 uh, all the curves uh, they merge together and we have a one curve showing the variation of the seismic response for, uh, factor S with T. For the peak ground velocity of 0 0.4 meter per second, uh, the A by G or the spectral acceleration normalized with G is given by this uh, equation that is equation 5.52. It is equal to 1.2 uh, for a time period uh, which is less than 0 0.427 and greater than 0 0.03 that is uh, for the uh, initial uh, portion of uh, the time period. And uh, for larger time period that is time period greater than 0 0.427, 
the SA by G is given as 0 0.512 no, by T n. Again here we can see that it is inversely proportional to the time period. Similarly, uh, uh, for other zones, uh, we will have different values of PGV and for that SA by G values will be given by given by different equations. T may be that is the time period uh, may be obtained uh, again by the Rayleigh's approximate formula. This time period is used when you are using the seismic coefficient method of analysis. The S and A by G versus time are compared for V is equal to 0 0.4 meter per second that is uh, for peak ground velocity is equal to 0 0.4 meter per second and uh, for i is equal to f is equal to 1 and z days is equal to z v that is acceleration and velocity related zones. For that um, the curve is shown over here and one can see uh, that uh, the s curve uh, that basically gives a higher value uh, than S A by G. So, far as the distribution of the lateral force is concerned, the equation that is used is uh, somewhat different than the international building code. In the international building code, uh, we had W i h i to the power k and the value of k could be 1, could be 2 and could be in between 1 and 2, but here it is uh, the value of k is simply is equal to 1 that is why it is w i h i divided by sum of w i h i over all the floors. The second difference is that on the left hand side in place of v b uh, it is v b minus f t where f t uh, is given a value of 0 for time period less than 0 0.7 second is equal to 0 0.07 v for uh, time period ranging from 0 0.7 to 3.6 second and uh, for time period greater than 3.6 second it is 0 0.25 b. One can see that uh, only for a very high time period that is for the large time period the V B get reduced here uh, to 3 fourth V B in the calculation of F i. Otherwise uh, for the time period uh, up to 3.6 second the value of V B uh, remains nearly equal to V B. Uh, up to 0 0.7 second it is exactly V B and uh, up to 0 0.3.6 second there is a slight reduction in the value of the V B and V B we calculate with the help of the uh, seismic coefficient uh, method that is multiplying the total weight of the building by the seismic coefficient. Next comes the Euro code. In the Euro code, uh, the base shear coefficient is called C s is uh, given by C e divided by Q dashed. Again, the Q dashed over here represents the reduction factor. So, we will not talk about it. So, we will be concentrating on C e. C e is given by uh, this equation 5.57. We can see that uh, for the time period uh, between 0 to T c, the value of c is equal to same as S A by G. The T c indicates the upper limit for the straight line portion of the curve and greater than T c that is uh, for time period greater than T c, the value of c e uh, is equal to S A by G multiplied by T C divided by T 1 
to the power minus one third. So, we expect that much non-linearity coming into picture for a greater time period. The pseudo acceleration when it is normalized with respect to g that is what we are calling an a by g or s a by g uh, is given by equation uh, 5.58 that I will show next. But before that uh, let me uh, talk about uh, the three periods T b, T c, T d uh, for hard, medium and soft soil. T c as I told you is the upper limit of the time period up to which the S a by g curve remains straight uh, remains a straight line a horizontal straight line. Now, uh, T b and T c are again uh, uh, some other periods that will be clear from the picture uh, of S a by g, uh, but these values important thing is that uh, are uh, different for different soil conditions. So, therefore, the uh, nature of the curve that we see for the hard, medium and soft soil they differ. When we uh, try to plot the pseudo acceleration uh, normalized with respect to g, uh, we call this a by g 0 that is uh, given as 1 plus 1.5 T n by T b so long as T n is lying between 0 to T b. So, it is the starting of the horizontal portion T b is the starting of the horizontal portion of the uh, spectral acceleration and up to that the variation is uh, given by uh, the first equation. And we can see that from T b to T c the value of a by uh, g 0 or s a by g 0 is uh, remains equal to 2.5 constant that is it becomes a horizontal line. Then uh, from T c to T d the value uh, is uh, 2.5 multiplied by T c by T n. Again here you can see that it is inversely proportional to the time period. Finally, when T n is greater than T d then uh, the value becomes 2.5 uh, into T c into T d divided by T n square that is a nonlinearity is further increased in this particular region. The Rayleigh's method uh, is used for calculating the time period T. Uh, note that many of the codes apart from prescribing the Rayleigh's method for calculating the time period T, uh, they may also provide some other empirical equations for calculating the time period T. Distribution of the lateral force follow the same pattern uh, as uh, the national building uh, code of Canada uh, that is uh, H i uh, having a power of unity that is k is equal to 1. Now, in this case either one can use the second formula which is w y into H i it is height dependent variation or one can use the first equation also uh, where phi I 1 uh, etcetera that uh, depends upon the uh, mode shape coefficient in the first mode. 1 indicates the first mode, I indicates the floor. So, either of this formula can be used uh, for obtaining the value of F i uh, at different story levels. This is the comparison of the C the seismic coefficient value normalized with the ground acceleration uh, and uh, the spectral acceleration normalized with, with the ground acceleration. And one can see that uh, the spectral acceleration 
is generally lower than the uh, seismic coefficient in the higher uh, time period range. Next comes the New Zealand code. In the New Zealand code, uh, the seismic coefficient and design response curves, uh, they are the same, they do not change. Uh, that is uh, the CH value and the SAYG value curves, uh, they are the same. However, when uh, we are designing the structure, uh, then uh, we uh, have uh, situations which are called a serviceability limit situation and uh, the ductility uh, situation that is the structures going into the inelastic range and the CT value that is calculated uh, that is used for calculating the forces uh, that is given by C B T 1 comma 1 multiplied by R Z L S. Now, the R Z and L S uh, they are basically uh, some factors Z is the zone factor, L S is a limit factor and R is the reduction factor. Now, T 1 comma N 1 means that the period and E 1 means mu is equal to 1 that is a uh, condition where the uh, system or the structure remains in the elastic uh, range and that is why it is called a serviceability limit condition. If we wish to uh, design the structure to uh, take it into the nonlinear range during earthquake, then we uh, have uh, the coefficient corresponding to different value of mu that is mu is equal to 2, mu is equal to 3, mu is equal to 4 depending upon the ductility that you wish to incorporate in the design. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, the curves that is seismic coefficient curve and design response curves specified for different ductility ratios. The other features of this code is the lateral load is multiplied by a factor of 0.92. Then figure in the subsequent figure 5.12 will show the plot of C B versus T for mu is equal to 1. Distribution of forces is the uh, same as equation 5.60 that is uh, the uh, same distribution W i H i divided by W i i H i summation over all the stories. Then uh, the time period may be calculated again using the Rayleigh's approximate method. Categories 1, 2, 3 they uh, denote the soft, medium and hard or uh, in the equation I said basically as reduction factor that is wrong, R is a risk factor and uh, Z is the zone factor and L S is the limit state factor. So, for the categories 1, 2, 3 we have different uh, kinds of curves. Uh, here uh, the C B versus the time period curve is shown for category 1, 2 and 3 and one can see that the for, for category 1 the value is uh, uh, less whereas for category 3 the value is more and they are for the hard, medium and soft soils. So, the C B versus a uh, time period curve that varies uh, with the soil condition. Next comes uh, uh, our IS code. Uh, in the IS code, the time period is calculated by an empirical formula and this empirical formula is different uh, than the Rayleigh's approximate formula. 
the distribution of forces is given by equation 5.65. Here uh, the k value is taken as 2, the v v is calculated using the seismic coefficient method. The seismic coefficient and SA by G they are uh, the same or that is the variation of C and SA by G versus T uh, they are the same and the SA by G for the hard soil is given by equation 5.62. Here again we can see that there is a range that is 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 second time period the SA by G value remains same that is it's a horizontal straight line and greater than uh, 0.4 time period the SA by G in is inversely proportional to the time period. For the medium soil uh, these uh, values are little bit changed the central portion that is of the curve that remains constant that is 2.5 and the initial phase that also remains same that is 1 plus 1.5 t only uh, the last segment of the curve that changes it is 1 by t for hard soil for medium soil it is 1.36 by t and for soft soil it is 1.67 by t. For the three types of the soil the SA by G uh, are shown over here and one can see that for soft soil and for greater time period. Uh, the SA by G coefficient e is more uh, that is uh, the for the soft soil uh, we expect more amplification to take place. An example problem is uh, solved using the code provisions in the course that I have just discussed. It is a 7 story frame uh, which is uh, shown in this figure the all beams uh, they have a dimension of 23 centimeter by 50 centimeter columns from 1, 2, 3 uh, first 3 floors we have 55 centimeter by 55 centimeter column size and uh, for the upper floors the column size are 45 centimeter by 45 centimeter. So, this is a 7 story frame made of concrete and this is uh, uh, designed for or, or analyzed for a modulus of elasticity of 2.5 into 10 to the power 7 concrete density 24 kilo Newton per meter cube and live load is uh, taken as 1.4 kilo Newton per meter. For calculating the masses apart from the dead load. 25 percent of the live load is considered for the top 3 floors and for rest of the floors 50 percent of the live load are considered uh, in the calculation of the mass. The time period uh, that were calculated we can get 7 time periods out of that the first uh, 3 time periods are shown that is 0 0.753 second for the 0 0.229 second and then 0 0.011 second. So, one can see that the uh, time periods they are uh, quite widely spaced uh, therefore, we expect that the SRSS rule and CQC rule uh, will provide uh, nearly the uh, same uh, kind of result. The reduction factor that we have considered uniformly for all the uh, codes as 3, peak ground acceleration is uh, taken as 0.4 g. For that purpose we have normalized all the C h versus T or S A by G versus T uh, values first and then uh, multiplied those normalized curves with the help of 0.4 g. For NBCC that uh, it comes uh, out to be that normalization comes out to, uh, to provide an equivalent PGA of uh, 0.65 g rather than 0.4 g. Uh, so, that is uh, coming because of the normalization effect. 
first period of the structure falls in the falling region of the response spectrum curve. So, that is the uh, most important thing and we have seen that in the falling portion of uh, the curve uh, different uh, curves given by different codes they differ substantially that is the observation. Uh, therefore, uh, if uh, the first time period falls in the falling zone, uh, then uh, the differences that may arise uh, due to the nature of the curve SA by G curve or the CH curve uh, that would be reflected in the, uh, the uh, response uh, values uh, or uh, in obtaining uh, different response quantities of interest. The results are summarized over here. IBC is the International Building Code, NBCC is the National Building Code of Canada, NJ is the New Zealand Code, uh, Euro 8 that is the Euro Code and the Indian Code. The comparison for the base shear, the first story displacement and the top story displacement are shown in this table. Firstly, one can see that when we take only the first three modes and when we consider all the modes, the results do not vary much that is what we expected because uh, the time periods are well separated. Uh, therefore, the values uh, will remain more or less same. Next uh, what we observe that IBC, NBCC and New Zealand code they give uh, one kind of result whereas, the Euro code and the Indian code they give uh, a higher value of the response. Uh, therefore, uh, we can see that the uh, values uh, obtained uh, using different codes they are they could be different and uh, out of the 5 that you have compared uh, the uh, Euro code provides the maximum values therefore, it is more conservative. Uh, whereas, uh, the IBC and uh, the NBCC code are more or less the same that is comparable. So, let me summarize uh, here that uh, we have discussed the code provisions with respect to three important parameters uh, that is the calculation of the time period, distribution of the load and the effect of the soil condition on the SA by G or the CH value given in different course and we can see that depending upon the code uh, the, these values can differ especially in the case when the time period or the fundamental time period is, is in the uh, region where the spectral acceleration curve or CH curve is uh, falling down. Uh, that is uh, the variation of CH or SA by G uh, with T uh, is in the falling range.